Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And today we're going to finish up the story of Gideon. Again, Gideon is found in uh, the book of Judges, chapter 6, 7, and 8. And uh, on day one, we talked about Gideon's call. He was an insignificant nobody that God called to be this mighty warrior. Day two, we talked about how God confirmed his doubts and said, no, this is what I want you to do, and Gideon did it. So today, I want to talk about how, how insane God's plan was for Gideon and how he was an, a man of incredible faith. Remember, even though he doubted, he was, had incredible faith to do what God had told him to do. So Gideon is at this point where now he's ready to lead the Israelites into battle against the Midianites. And so he calls the tribe of Manasseh to get together, come and let's, let's fight. And, and 36,000 men show up, 32,000 men, something like that. And, and now I understand there's 136,000 Midianites that they're opposing to, and 32,000 Israelites show up. So they're outnumbered four to one. And, uh, and Gideon's like, okay, we can maybe do this. And God says, Gideon, you have too many men. You, you need to send home everybody who's afraid. And, and I love this part because uh, 22,000 men go home, and Gideon is left with 10,000 Marines, Okay. I, and, and if you're a Marine, you understand what I'm saying. You guys don't have the sense to be afraid. So uh, you're like, okay, come on, bring on the Midianites. We're going to take them on. And, uh, and that's crazy because they're outnumbered 13 to 1 now. And God says, Gideon, you have too many men. Now at this point, if I were Gideon, I'd be saying, God, you can't do math. Uh, but God says, look, I'm afraid that if you, they're not afraid, but God says, if you lead them into battle and you win, they're going to talk about how great Gideon is as a, as a warrior and a general, but I want the glory for myself. So you got to take them down to the brook, have them drink a certain way. I'll tell you which ones to keep. So uh, Gideon takes them down to this uh, stream. Actually, if you go with this to Israel in 2025, you'll be able to visit it. But it takes them down to the stream and they drink and uh, 300 men drink the way that God directs. Now, depending on which theologian or historian you talk to, those are either 300 uh, Rambos or they're 300 Gomer Piles. And if you're too young to understand Gomer Pile, look it up. Uh, Google it. So here's the thing. It doesn't matter. You had 300 men against 136,000 men. And then God explains the battle plan. Now, it would be okay if God, like, okay, I'm going to just, like, send you a weapon of war from the future, and you're going to have 300 men with submachine guns and grenades. Uh, okay, I'll take that battle. But here's God's plan. Here's his insane plan. He says, Gideon, I want you to take a, a pot and put a torch in it, and then I want you to take a trumpet. Nothing about swords, nothing about atomic bombs, nothing about tanks, just uh, a trumpet and a pot and a torch. And then I want you to divide your 300 men up into three companies. I want you to surround the camp of 136,000 men. And then I want you to uh, break the pots, hold up the torches, blow the trumpets, and shout a sword for the Lord and Gideon. So basically, God's plan for his army of 300 to take on an army of 136,000 was, I want you to surround them so that you, you know, you've got no help. And then I want you to hold a torch up and blow a trumpet so they can find where you really easily to kill you. It's a suicide mission. And Gideon and 300 men do exactly as God says. And when they smash the pots and hold up the torches and blow the trumpets and do the shout thing, God causes the Midianites to start fighting each other. And they wipe out almost all of them. I think 10,000 got away and Gideon and his 300 men chased them, caught them, killed them as well and captured the kings. And there's a, a more story involved in that. There's a story of offense and, and uh, other tribes being all upset and everything. But in, in the end, Gideon has this great victory. And, and here's the point I want you to get today. If God asks you to do something crazy, which he does in Scripture all the time, okay, uh, you know, tithing is crazy if you're not a believer in Jesus, because why would you give God 10% of your money? Uh, and, of course, Jesus asked for more because, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. That's crazy. It's insane. You know, forgiving people who have hurt you, whether they ask or not, is crazy. Except that's what Jesus said for us to do. Uh, you, you know, serving people, not for money, but just because you're going to serve them and bless them and help them, is crazy. 
in this world that we live in. Yet these are things that God asks us to do. And here's the thing, just like Gideon, if we do those things, God will give us an amazing victory. We may not see how. We may think it's, a, it's impossible or crazy, but God will give us the victory every time we obey him and trust him. Because you're not going to obey him if you don't trust him. And you're not going to see victory if you don't trust him and obey him. Uh, you know, there's an old hymn, and I'll leave you with this. It simply says, uh, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So I hope you'll be like Gideon, and you'll trust, and you'll obey, and you'll see victory in your life. God bless.